So we're going to start off with just some really simple charts here. And the first thing that I'd love to show is the most incredibly stupidly simple pie chart. Okay? You got a circle? Everybody knows how to draw a circle. But have you ever touched that handle right there? Okay? I call that the waka waka handle. Because what happens when you do that, it looks like Pac-Man. Absolutely. So when you do this and you actually break this apart, this is like, oh my gosh. But I'm going to bring up my transform panel here. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this because we're going to focus directly on this. And what this allows me to do is just open up the pie shape. And people are like, yeah, well, you know, what happens if I need like 65%? Is that kind of close? Well, no. I mean, we need it to be accurate, all right? So none of this, you know, close enough kind of thing. So it's cool. We can just simply grab those little handles, move all around, but you notice it only shows in degrees of the circle. So how many people know how to do math? Good, because I don't, okay? There's three things I can't do, math and count. So here, what I want to do is I want to enter in and do really simple basic pie charts here, and this is just going to be a two-component pie chart, okay? Say we've got to show 65% of one thing, 35% of another. Stupidly simple pie chart, circle R. So here, you see when I grab the first handle and I move it around, in my transform panel, we're going to see our initial start angle right here. But because this is all in percentages, or in um, degrees of the circle, I want to do this in percentages. So it's really simple here, okay? This is the most complicated math you're going to do. We have 100% and we have 360 degrees in the circle. 1% equals 3.6 degrees. If you can't remember, it's in the handout. 1%, 3.6 degrees. So if I come in here and I want to show like 65%, I simply type in 65. And then on the laptop, it's the shift 8, which gives us our little asterisk right there. Okay, that's our multiply. And then that's our number of, that's our percentage. And we multiply it by 3.6. Okay, that is my calculator, by the way. Any place where there's a field, you can calculate. Yes, that works in all the applications. So once I do that, then what this does is this opens it up 65%. So I've got the remaining 35% right here. And how do I get the other half? Well, if I click on the little flip it button right here, it flips back and forth. I know. So you're like, well, if that does that, I could just go ahead and copy it, and then I could flip it, and then I could try to put those pieces together, and then you look like that woman in the car commercial where she can't get her key in the door and is like leaving foot long scratch, you know, trying to do this, and no, don't do this. Here's what you do. If we flip this back and forth, and you want to copy it right in place, you hold down your option key. Option click, flip, you got your pie. Okay? I know. And then what you do is you go in, and I always want to change the color. Now, I'm a real stickler with color because I don't want to go ahead and have multicolored pies here. What I like to do is I like to keep it really simple, and I like to use just tints of the same color. All right? So what I'm going to do is, if I go to my swatch panel here, I've picked a color right here, but the annoying thing is, is that I just want a lighter tint of that color. And unfortunately, you can't go and get a tint of a non-global color. What's a non-global color? Well, it's every color that we use. And where is your tint panel? Well, we have no tint panel. But if I go into my swatch panel, and I double click on the swatch, and I make it global, okay? We're inside, so you cannot see the skies part, but the angels are singing. Okay? Once I turn that into a global color, the one benefit that I have, well, the two benefits I have is that I can change this color in the swatch panel and change it anywhere that I've used it. But also in my color panel, I can now go in and I can create a tint of that color, which allows me to very easily go in and change that color right there and get a tint of that color instead of hunting it down. Now, if you don't want to use the tint of the color and you'd like to use a slightly different color in here or do something like this where it's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and create a slightly different color, you know, kind of set it off like that, you can. I'd like to use global colors and tints. 